Hey everybody, it's Brian Coley, The Movie Whisperer, and this is a place where we look at the intersection of our story with our movies. And uh, for the last few videos, I've been looking at the concept of the relationship between the box office and the Oscars, and how my theory is that the Oscars tells us where we're headed as far as our story as a country, um, and the box office tells us where we are. Uh, but there has been exceptions to that, and I feel like one company has been a major exception, and that is Disney. In the last video, we looked at the concept of Disney being an amplifier of the Oscar theme. So we specifically looked at 2017 and looked at how the Oscar theme of 2017 was that we needed to go back to the past and get a accurate uh, you know, uh, truth about the past, that we needed to find out what is the truth about the past, even if it means looking at the sins of our past. And of course, that played out in culture with Charlottesville, with the Me Too movement, with the NFL kneel down. And uh, it also played out with Disney amplifying those themes miraculously with their timing of Thor Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Beauty and the Beast, as well as Coco. And so in this episode, what I'd like for us to do is look at, at the times in which Disney has maybe the special magic where it actually is a predecessor to what the Oscars are getting ready to say. Uh, so it actually came before the Oscars. So let's rewind a little bit and I wanna take you back to the 2018 Oscars. So this is the Oscars in 2018. Uh, there is two themes that come out of the Oscars this year. One is the idea of words, both spoken and unspoken. And it represents the kind of uh, latter half of, let's see, my hand goes over here. So this, these movies right here. Um, and then the, the first half over here is movies in which the theme was that women needed to step up and take their agency to be change agents. Uh, so you see that in three billboards. Uh, probably the movie that I think I see it the most in is The Post where you've got Meryl Streep's character as this newspaper owner of the Post. Uh, and she is in this boys club and she needs to step up and take her agency and her power as this newspaper uh, owner and be able to expose the sins of the Vietnam War that, that uh, had been hidden. Uh, and so you see that there, you see it with Shape of Water, uh, uh, with her being a change agent and taking agency, Lady Bird, Phantom Thread. These were all movies in which this theme seemed to be loud and proud. Now, you may be going, Brian, come on, women have always been around. They've been, they're change agents. Uh, you know, uh, is this something special? To me, it was. To me, it was a, a special moment in which there was just this, you know, uh, splurge of, of women on the scene as change agents, um, even in culture in 2018. And since then, we've seen that. So if you think about culture in the last three years, it's just an explosion of women being change agents. But in 2018 specifically, that was the year that is what call, is called the blue wave in Congress, where all these women, an unprecedented number of women were elected in Congress and were taking agency as change agents. So, uh, and then probably for me over the last uh, year, um, I would say I've seen so many women of color, uh, black women being change agents and taking their agents, prob agency, probably, uh, I'm a home homer here. So, uh, you know, I live in Atlanta and I'm proud of Stacey Abrams because wow, uh, for her to take a defeat and change it into being a, uh, you know, realizing I can still have agency and becoming a, a community mobilizer. And ultimately, I believe she was a change agent for this election. I mean, it's just amazing to see so many women who are heroes in our country right now because of the way that they uh, step up into agency and are change agents. So just seeing that play out in culture, well, where is Disney in all this? Like, where was Disney in uh, this concept? So if we go back uh, to Disney, I, I like to go back way far with Disney and show how they were really ahead of the curve. Now, uh, you probably think Disney princesses. Well, in the, in the 2000s, Disney, Disney actually rebooted the, the idea of Disney princesses. There was always like Disney, uh, Disney princess here and there, but they brought it together into this um, team of Disney princesses in the 2000s. And then, of course, that uh, the Disney idea of a Disney princess started to evolve. So you started to see characters like Merida and Brave, or you saw Moana or, or Frozen, you saw Elsa and Anna. And here are these women who are leaders in power and are stepping in, figuring out how to step into their agency to be change agents. 
Um, so uh, when we look at the timeline with that, you know, I think, uh, let's see, Frozen was uh, 2013. So that was way before 2018. And when we look at the timeline as far as Moana, even that is uh, 2016. So we're already way ahead of the curve as far as Disney and the idea of, of women being change agents. But um, when we come to 2017, I think uh, I look at 2017 and I look at go back to Beauty and the Beast. We talked about it a little bit as far as the idea of uh, amplifying the theme of going back and looking at the sins of the past. But I also think it was a predecessor to 2018 of the idea of a woman coming in and breaking the curse of this kingdom. So here, in any time I look in movies, by the way, if you think of kingdoms or rulers and stuff like that, you should always think, how are these movies reflective of our kingdom and our rulers, our people in power? And so here is a woman who comes into a kingdom and breaks a curse. Uh, so I love that um, as an example. But uh, I would say that uh, the movie that actually was the biggest movie that was a predecessor to the 2018 idea of women taking agency was a little bitty film called The Last Jedi. And if you think of The Last Jedi, you'll see uh, that, uh, you know, you've got Luke Skywalker. Luke is kind of royalty amongst Star Wars world. And he's now the Obi-Wan Kenobi, old white male who's the mentor figure. And who does he decide that he's going to give his power and, and uh, you know, bring into agency? He's going to uh, a woman. And so Rey becomes this Jedi uh, woman, one of the first Jedi women who actually uh, comes into power and uh, agency with this film. And then, of course, we see, spoiler alert, what happens with Luke at the end. And we're going to actually talk about this in the third part of the series about Disney, about the idea of distribution of power. And ultimately, I'm going to trigger a lot of people, but the idea of people like me who are old white males and how maybe power is actually being distributed, distributed from this one held up source over the years and how the Oscars have been signaling that in Disney with The Last Jedi was signaling that too. So that is the next episode. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you was just how the box office was amplified. Uh, the box office amplified the Oscar themes. So you see a little bit of uh, Disney being a predecessor to Oscar themes, but I also, once again, they're an amplifier too. But here is the all the films that came out in 2018. And this is pretty miraculous. I call this the year of the woman in film. Here is all the films that had female protagonists. The first row, row and this is 2018, coming right after this Oscar theme, again, let me put a footnote that these movies were made well in advance and they were conceived well in advance of that. So this is pretty miraculous for them to all come together in this one year. And in the top row, what you see is women being, uh, are gender swapping. So you see movies like Ocean's Eleven, which are all men. This is Ocean's Eight, which is all women. Blockers is like uh, American Pie with female, uh, you know, teenagers. Uh, Life of the Party is a, a female version of old school. Um, you see even in Wakanda, which we'll talk about the next episode, where women are the generals, where we usually see men as the generals. And then I, I really want to uh, show with the second row, if you look at the second row, there's a story uh, principle or a story structure called Avenging Angels. That's where a character is a, it's a type of movie where a character is coming back and they're trying to get payback uh, for what's been done wrong to them. These are the movies that actually were those fell into that genre. Now, why this is hugely important as far as timing is concerned is these movies were made before the Me Too movement and they actually came out after the Me Too movement. So just a miraculous convergence of all these films of women actually, in fact, I love the, the title Payback as a Mother, where these women are doing payback, avenging the sins. And specifically, a lot of these sins are about men who are, you know, uh, sexually in, uh, impropriety or, you know, are um, harassing. So you see a lot of films that actually were reflective in 2018 of something that happened just months before with the Me Too movement. So pretty miraculous that all these films amplified uh, the um, Oscar theme. And then of course, in Disney World, we saw uh, a gender swap with Incredibles 2, where instead of fighting the villain, uh, Bob, the Mr. Incredible fighting the villain, it's Mrs. Incredible fighting the villain. And then the finally, and the last thing I'll show you is, um, as far as this theme is concerned, amplifying it, 
with Disney. If there wasn't a more change agent character as far as a woman, it would be Mary Poppins. And Mary Poppins has to return in 2018 to clean up our mess. So just another example of women being change agents. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this episode of looking at how Disney has been a predecessor, but we're going to look at it even more in this last episode or this last video that I want to do about Disney and how they've actually been ahead of the Oscars. So thanks so much for watching today and hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.